How many people? How many people? How many ever? Anyone in this room deploying anything right now? Yeah. I mean, has anyone managing a deployment anywhere? Are you writing applications? Uh, what are you all doing in the room so far? <laughs> I mean, in general, your work or wherever you may be. Yeah. Okay. So. This is a problem that's really hard to solve, it's benchmarking cloud. So I want to take you through real quickly what benchmarking is, and then how benchmarking with models is easy, and then Wednesday, James B is going to show you how to benchmark OpenStack. I, I hope you know that. <laughs> um, so, still Marco. Um, so much like the way we deploy and manage applications today, the way we do benchmarking is changing as well. And it's a really interesting topic from a for me, from a scientific perspective, because um, I'm always interested in performance. I like cars, I like fast, I like fast cars, and there's always this kind of baseline measurement of performance, you know? It's always the zero to 60, or how big's the engine, how, how, how heavy's the car, and all these factors lead to a benchmark of how awesome that car is, or how fast that car is. Um, and so, I always like performance. I always like to know, am I doing something better than I was yesterday? Um, am I getting generally faster, better, stronger, whatever it is I'm deploying? Um, and I've noticed, and we've noticed in general, a shift in, in technologies that because of the way things are advancing, because of this idea of HPC and these large scale applications, and the reason we invented Juju, measured performance is becoming, uh, is, be is, becoming is, uh, is changing. Um, so performance usually started at the machine level. You can think of things like, you know, um, Sidebench or Ferronix Test Suite. You ran a benchmark, and that benchmark was the same configuration, the same tool, the same parameters, and you just changed one variable, and that variable is the hardware you ran it on. And the number you produced would say how fast that hardware is. So when you bought a new x86 server, you could run this Ferronix Test Suite against it, or you could run Sidebench, and you'd get back a number that says how fast it is. And then you got components. The components are things like applications. So suddenly you started benchmarking that single component. You said, how fast is my MySQL server? Or benchmark my data store. Benchmark Apache. Let me just throw a bunch of traffic at it. The problem with that is, is that you're measuring the performance, but you have multiple variables changing underneath. You're not just benchmarking the machine. Well, you're intrinsically benchmarking the machine. You're also benchmarking that application and how that application is configured. And then now we're at a stage where we have whole solutions. Uh, 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 a service is no longer just a component of something. It's, you know, how do I benchmark OpenStack? And OpenStack is 20, 30 components all interconnected with all unique configurations, all on different machines. And changing any one of those things at any one of those levels skews your benchmark result, but it's very hard to trace back why that happened. So this is essentially the idea is, uh, as we've been growing, we have things like this for the machine. PyBench, SysBench, FIO, PTS. It's very easy to benchmark a machine. There are lots of tools to help solve this. And even components now, it's very easy to benchmark a MongoDB. It's easy to benchmark Cassandra, or uh, Rados for Ceph, Siege for just Apache or a web server, um, et cetera. But when we start looking at things like uh, a solution, for instance, this is, uh, <laughs> Funny enough, a Django stall. Um, it's Django with a memcache, a Postgres, and a squid. Um, and I can benchmark Postgres pretty easily. I just kind of attach Postgres bench to it, and I kind of just execute against it. Um, and this is that component. I'm benchmarking that single component, but it doesn't help me see the rest of the picture. I could also attach siege to squid. I could say siege, attack squid with a bunch of traffic. And that actually ends up attacking the entire solution. Because I'm exercising Squid, which is also exercising Django, which is also exercising Memcache and Datastore, I've suddenly benchmarked my entire solution, which is great. We have that today. But the problem is, is this is just one facet of that. Um, so I don't necessarily know, just by saying I benchmark these things, what's going on under the covers. So benchmarking is more than just the machine and more than just the single component's performance and more than just the entire solution's performance, but it's also what happened on that machine when I was benchmarking. I could have gotten a number back, let's say 1,000, but the CPU was idle the entire time. And that 1,000 is worthless because I don't have to actually stressing the machine with the application <coughs> that's configured. So there's a bottleneck somewhere potentially, or maybe I just don't have enough force pushing into the stack. So without gathering metrics, it's very hard to see, am I actually truly benchmarking something? 
And so now you have to add another facet to this idea. It's not just how's my component, how's my machine, how's my solution, but what are all of these machines that have these solutions and components, what are they doing? So Juju affords you this because you can do things like metric collection. So it wouldn't be great just to say, I have a metric collector now, and it lives on all these nodes that it collects things. Um, okay, so great, now we have metric collection. Um, and so, I can't measure chaos. That's not a good idea. Um, so now I have metrics, now I have the components, I have the model that I've deployed, I have the machines that I've deployed, I've done benchmarks across the board. But that still doesn't let me know exactly what is going on. And that, we need the architecture for. And so architecture is not just the model, but it's how that model is represented on machines. So this model, in this case, looks like it's maybe just one component per machine, but it's actually maybe components co-located onto varying size machines. So I have to know not just the performance of the machine in a benchmarking, not just the component, not just the solution, not just what these machines are doing, but where these things live on these machines. What if I made one machine bigger? What if I <coughs> move some components around or added more components to these machines? Tracking all of these things make benchmarking very hard. So when we look at things like what is cloud benchmarking, what does it actually mean? It means benchmarking on a cloud is really hard because there are a lot of different moving parts that need to be tracked and not every single not every single run will encompass just one change. It could be a series of changes that happen. It could be the mutation of the, you, you scaled your services out, you put more services on a single node and you've made a node bigger. Um, it may be that you're not even stressing it hard enough. The metrics will show you. You're not really doing anything to cause stress in this node, so your benchmark results are essentially worthless here. So benchmarking clouds is hard because you have to track a lot of different facets in order to get a very clear picture. So, that's all these components combined, that's what that means. So Juju gives you this ability to model that complexity. So all of those screenshots were all Juju GUIs of all components that you can deploy. And because Juju's modeling things from the machine all the way up to the top, you get this idea of repeatable benchmarking out of the box, essentially. So if you have a workload and you want to test it, most workloads have a way to generate stress against it. Um, Siege is probably the most uh, topical one, or Apache Bench, or um, Blitz, uh, these are all things that generate load traffic, traffic to a, a service. Let's say here's web traffic that's attacking your service, and you can measure that over time and quantitate it. Um, and most components have some sort of benchmarking as well. The stress uh, for Cassandra or PG Bench or MySQL uh, Bench. Um, so at the end of the day, when we talk about things like cloud benchmarking, we talk about benchmarking in general. If you can't repeat that benchmark, it is not a benchmark. Um, this is why I love reading white papers. <laughs> Has anyone looked at white papers for performance for anything? No, it's okay. I'm not the only guy that does that, I understand. But they're really annoying because when you look at a white paper for performance, they usually say, here's generally what we did, and here are the numbers we got, and look at how awesome our thing was. But there's no way for me to go say, is that actually accurate? You just have to trust the white paper. Um, so what's great about things like Juju and modeling is that you can essentially take a model and make it into a white paper. I have these services that you can deploy this is how I ran that process. Here's how you can repeat every single step. Here's how you can change any of these things and remeasure performance. Um, so I'm going to show a demo. I'm going to cut through pretty quickly just to show what this looks like and what tool we've kind of built for this. So because Juju affords us this model, it makes it really not easy. I'm sorry. It makes it easier to start benchmarking things. So once you've started modeling applications, once you started modeling your topology you're deploying, adding on things like how is the performance of this model that I've created? What happens when I tweak these buttons? Do I get better or worse performance? Becomes something you can actually start doing. Benchmarking, for me, has been a pipe dream in every job I've had previous. I've been rush, 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 must take all these things that we want to deploy, put them in production, and by the time I get a breath to even see, is this probably the best way to do this? I have to go figure out some other thing, or put out another fire, or figure something out. So benchmarking is like, uh, well, it's a lot like configuration management for, for the early ages. Everyone says you should be doing configuration management, but it's so hard to get to that stage. It's an investment of time and effort to get there. So we've built a couple of tools around Juju. So once you start adopting the idea of modeling your architecture, modeling your software, it makes it really easy for you to take that and say, here's my application model, and start executing load against it. Um, so we built a tool. So I'm going to show you a couple of things. Um, First, this is Juju in the command line. It's like something we haven't shown yet. We've shown a bunch of pretty pictures. This is what Juju looks like when you run the command line. Um, so real quickly, just to show you what I have here, is I have a model deployed. Um, it's on 
Amazon. Let's find out what model number. Um, <coughs> yeah, it's on Amazon. So I'm in US East 1. I deployed this model, and I completely deployed it about 22 minutes ago. Um, so what I've deployed is uh, Cassandra, a Cassandra stress, and then two GUIs, a benchmark GUI and a Juju GUI. Um, if you're like me and live in the command line, this is awesome. So it shows you my services at the very top, shows you the units of each of those. So it's not just Cassandra, it's actually Cassandra scaled to three, uh, three units. So I have Cassandra stroke three, four, and five. Um, it shows you the workload states. So they're all active. There's no problem for me to, to, to monitor. Everything's idle. So Juju's not running anything on them currently. Juju's not issuing out events for them to manage. They've all gone idle. Um, I see I'm running Alpha 1 because I'm, I love Bleeding Edge. These are the ports that Juju can expose for me. This is the public IP addresses I can connect to. And this is the message from these services. So Cassandra currently has two live seeds and one live node. Uh, this GUI is ready at this address. And this service is ready to stress. And these are the machines and how they correlate to this model. So each unit is on its own machine. Um, Oh, that show me used to it. It does typically also show you what size those machines are. So what I'm going to do now is go over to the GUI because the command line is great, but GUIs are beautiful. Uh, so I have this. This is the live running GUI. You see that IP address? You can go to it. You won't be able to log in, but uh, this is actually running in Amazon right now. It's running in my AWS US East One model, and I've got these components represented as my model. I've got this gray out service, as you can see, is my Cassandra stress. I've got Cassandra, it's got three nodes behind it. I've got this benchmark GUI, I've got this collector thing, I've got a Juju GUI. So I have five services deployed across six machines. And I can go down and peek at all these machines. I can see that uh, in these machines, I've got of the six I have, what are their uh, sizes? I've got one three gigahertz CPU and four gigs of RAM. <coughs> and down here, Cassandras are running on four core 13 gigahertz processors with 15 gigs of RAM. So I've got a relatively large size Cassandra cluster and a couple of other services that are deployed across there and they're all sitting on the root. Uh, what's cool is I could say, well, let me scale up this Cassandra service. So scale service, uh, four units. <coughs> Alpha hardware. Um, Typically, I'd be able to confirm and place them, but since I never live in the GUI, I don't test these out very often. But I'd be able to scale these out. On the command line, I can just scale them as well uh, using this add unit primitive. So juju, add unit, uh, Cassandra. I'm not going to do that because then I won't be able to run my benchmark demo. Um, but that's there. So benchmarking in juju, how do, we, how do we do benchmarking now? So we have these services, we have these tools, we have a, a stress tool that I wrote, Cassandra stress. Upstream says, here's the tool you run. It's called Cassandra, I have the name, Cassandra Stress. You tell it where your cluster is, and it generates load against it. You can supply these configuration parameters. It's a pretty straightforward service, and one that we've modeled here. Um, Cassandra Stress has in it an action. So if I go to, I see here, this is a old style compiled charm. And in here I have an actions.yaml file. This actions.yaml ex exposes the tasks that you can run against it, the actions you can execute against the service. This is only one action, it's called stress. And this is so that I can repeatedly and reliably explain to Juju what I wish to do as, as a command. I say, Juju, I want to run this action with these commands. Because Juju models this, Juju can record you ran this action with these commands and then it translates that into an event, the charm responds to that event, and that's what I tell it to. But because it's modeled, you can easily start repeating that and recording how that's done. So, um, again, command line is great, but um, GUIs are prettier. So we built this. Uh, this is that second service. So the first one is Juju GUI, and that's awesome. It's this great way to view your models and poke around at it. Uh, Benchmark GUI is probably not nearly as pretty, but it's meant to be able to say, um, how do you manage to run benchmarks into your environment? So I ran one 21 minutes ago after I deployed the cluster. Uh, so I just ran a stress and it shows me back that you ran stress and I got back 1,173 operations a second. I did that in two minutes and 44 seconds. 
Uh, what's great about this GUI is I can run those actions again. So I can launch a benchmark. Tells me I only have one, the Cassandra Stress. Now I can tweak the parameters. Uh, instead of running just a thousand operations, I want to really stress it. Let's. Mm, sure, why not? Uh, actually, no, I want to be able to finish this talk on time. Um, so I can tweak all these parameters. These parameters are the ones that were defined in the actions YAML. So Juju models the way that we do benchmarking much as you would a repetitive task. How do you do a backup or a restore on something? Uh, so I'm just going to run this benchmark. And it's running it as an action against this unit. So it's all recorded in the Juju model. Everything I've done, the parameters, the unit I ran it against, um, it'll boot it up. And if we go back to the Juju uh, GUI, or rather the command line GUI, we'll see status has started changing now. Um, before we were, well, we're still active here, but you see that there's a, an execution going on in the environment. So this is a bit of observability. And I can see that the stress event is running, and it's told me it's stressing this IP address, which is this Cassandra node. So when you look at the model, I've connected Cassandra to Cassandra stress, and Cassandra said, here's all the information you need to know in order to connect to my cluster. And using that information, and the action the parameters provided, I'm now stressing that cluster. So it'll take a few minutes to run. Eventually it'll come back. It'll either fail, because I've done a terrible job coding it, or it'll succeed in giving back results. Well, what's great about this is I can now run this action anytime I want against any permutations of the Cassandra cluster. Let's say I'm not satisfied with these results. I think I need bigger machines. I could tear down this model, or I can amend the model and scale Cassandra onto bigger machines, more nodes of Cassandra, stress again. Repeat, repeat, repeat. Because everything is distilled in this Juju model, what I get is the ability to, oh, I have to wait two more minutes, uh, the ability to view the results, compare the results, and ultimately export and say, here's everything I did to run this. Here's the model I used. Here are the commands that I used to run it. Here's how you replicate these results. Try it on other clouds. So I could say, this is Amazon. But I could say, is Cassandra faster or slower on GCE or Azure or any other cloud? Or how about my metal? Um, is it really worth us moving our entire data center to the cloud? Can we get the same performance we'd expect? Probably not. But depending on the application, you may not need all that bare metal. You may find out that based on the metrics, you're not actually really using all the metal. It may not be worth you uh, um, having all that in the data center. So I showed the benchmark GUI, but what I didn't show is this idea here, is this collector node. Uh, this benchmark collector sits there and more or less collects what the machine's doing every time we run a benchmark. So it's sitting there grabbing, what's the CPU, what's the memory, what's, the, what's, what's going on in the background. Uh, so this is the previous result I ran. So it shows me the topology it ran against. I have Cassandra, Cassandra Stress, and a collector. It shows me the parameters I used to initiate that benchmark run. The results, so not just the operations a second, but also all the other details of that benchmark run that correlate and produce that result. So it's not just the, um, the operation rates, but also the latency, um, the row rates, the GCC time, the median latency, everything I need to know. If I want to drill down further and really compare, well, this one was faster than this one. What really changed? What difference in the results with different parameters? And it also grabs an entire snapshot of all the machines. You know the architecture as well. How big are these machines? What were their capabilities? What was their hardware profile? What packages were installed? What versions of packages? Because Juju models all of these primitives for us, it's very easy for us to poke and say that when we have two benchmark results, which I'm hoping we have, okay, not yet, almost there. Um, I shouldn't have given so many rows to run. But when we have these two results, we can start comparing and saying, what was really different between these? And you compare the results across all of the facets, including uh, what was executing at the time on the machine. So if I wanted to, I could start graphing things like um, none, because this was an early run. I'll give it a second. You can start also doing things like graphing the CPU rate, the memory rate, the disk operations, the, the RAM, the load on those machines, any kind of basic machine primitive, including a few specific ones for the application. For instance, Apache, what was the request of seconds you were hitting, and things of that nature. Uh, you can start graphing and comparing those two between each other. Um, yes. Okay, uh, I'm running pretty close to time, but that's essentially the talk here. And the last bit that I want to show is the ability to export this data. Um, so you can export this data, it downloads the entire data, everything, the results, the actions, the models, the graphing data. 
and you can import it into any other instances of this benchmark GUI. So if you have a benchmark GUI running in two different clouds, you want to compare results to the same services you run, you can export and do so. Um, so this is how we've envisioned making, using the Juju model, making benchmarking easier. Uh, we do that by saying, because we model every facet, Juju models everything from your infrastructure to your applications, configurations, and the actions you run, which are the benchmarks. It makes it really easy to introspect every point in time that you've changed and manipulated and see what those differences is that may have led to that result. Um, any questions? Yeah. How do you deal with other workloads on your cluster, not related to your benchmark? How so? So some other <coughs> services running on the very machines uh, you use for benchmarking. Mm -hmm. So for instance, if we were to say, um, <coughs> I'm benchmarking Cassandra, so I've got Cassandra sitting on this node, but what if I have another service running here that's completely <coughs> auxiliary to it? Yeah. Um, Juju models and knows that, and when you look at the model, which I'll show you the YAML model here, um, <coughs> so this is the pretty GUI view, this is the YAML representation. Um, this wasn't very thorough because there's not any special derivatives, but it would show you something like if you had another services, this application was also existent on this machine, so there'd be a third stanza for machines. And so there's machine zero, one, two, three, with these constraints, and these two services exist on the same machine. So you'd see that in, in, your, in your topology here. I don't have that model, so it doesn't really, it, it makes it the least amount required, but that's how you would see, ah, there was something else on that machine that was running. Um, and that would allow you to say, okay, take this topology, which is a model, a bundle, remove that service from it completely, redeploy it again, and do I get different results? So, as long as the service running on that machine is also modeled in Juju, Juju will know. <coughs> uh, good question, though. Uh, any other questions? 